Hi guys, welcome back to Will the Beard Review. Tonight we're going to talk about Marauders, issue 4, written by Gary Duggan with art by Lucas Wernick. And holy hell, just like X-Force issue 4, Marauders issue 4 is an awesome issue. This issue has everything. It's got Storm and Pyro being a badass. It's got Shadowcat and Bishop being an awesome duo. It's got a racist, hateful woman uh, getting uh, humiliated very publicly. It's got a mutant fashion designer. It's got all kinds of good stuff. Another awesome, awesome issue. And what is maybe my... I don't know, man. I think this might be my second favorite of the Dawn of X titles so far. I keep changing my my, uh, my ranking of these as more and more issues uh, come out, but good lord, this was a phenomenal issue. We're going to dive into it here like we always do on the channel. Let's crack this puppy open. So this one's actually called Public Humiliation. I dig it, right? All right, so first off, we get um, this, one of these uh, memos here from the X desk um, uh, talking about Krakoa. And we still don't know who this person is, but I like um, how they are. It's basically talking about the um, Krakoan ships um, that there aren't in, there's no registry on them. They've only, and only two have ever been photographed. Um, the yacht with the big cannon, which is the main ship, the Marauder. Um, then the Black Frigate, um, which I believe is Sebastian Shaw's ship. And then there's a third one, um, because they're, because they just know that there is. Um, that's got to be the Indivisible One that uh, Shaw built for uh, Shinobi Shaw, or Sebastian built for Shinobi Shaw that we saw at the end of last issue. But then the whoever's writing this goes on to talk about... Um, He's like, uh, not much else I can tell you because I'm on a desk, not on a boat. Um, the, the United States is going to need to throw more bodies at this desk fast. The human intelligence world is paralyzed. So everyone's scrambling to get um, information on Krakoa, which is, you know, a really cool idea. And one plays into one of the biggest things that I love about um, coming out of Hawks and Pox into Dawn of X is, you know, what does the, the um, how does the status quo change for the world now that we have the music? nation of Krakoa, right? And then it says here, oh, there's one other interesting thing that happened this week. Emma Frost, White Queen, um, arrived in Manhattan's fashion district, accompanied by a large, bald man with four arms named Jumbo Carnation. Love that name. Um, now that's not the interesting part. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, it says they ran around and bought a bunch of red and white fabrics. And he says, I know this from social media because I have no bodies on the X desk. I love it. So full of sarcasm and just general angst in this one. Um, turns out that Jumbo Carnation died like four years ago in a bar fight. And this person knew about it because they were a cop in Manhattan. And so they're like, uh, they're bringing mutants back some kind of way. We need people. Um, uh, he says here, maybe the mutants are going back in time. But what do I know? I'm on a desk. If you're still reading Send Money and Bodies, we're still behind dig it so so much all right here we go now we're going into the main comic we got a bunch of kids uh mutants here on a beach um in brazil you know they're talking about you know there's a a blockade you can see a couple uh ships out there in the distance they're saying the marauders aren't going to come for us blah 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 we need to get out of here and then a storm starts and then i love it someone's singing i don't can't tell if it's like a radio playing or if it's pyro singing any way you want it that's the way you need it and then you got uh them coming right through the ships and pyro doing pyro things blasting flamethrowers at the other ships uh love it just singing having a grand old time with his big old face tattoo because he's a big old dummy i love it so much so the kids see that um, the Marauder ship is coming, and then uh, uh, mutants, I presume called Paragon, either a mutant or a hero in Brazil, uh, slams in, does a little, uh, not quite a superhero landing there, but he's basically like, you guys are going, aren't going anywhere. You owe service to the state, which is a very dangerous thing that I never hope to hear in real life. Um, it says you walk off this beach and you're a traitor. The penalty for treason is death, and one of them says you and the other ones are like oh he doesn't speak for us and then i love it you see off out of frame no one will be killed today these children don't belong to you oh and it is storm rolling in being every bit the badass storm is i love this costume it's so cool i really i really dig that this costume um and this dude 
not a good play if you do. He says, do you really want to risk a fight with me? And she says, I don't even know who you are. Pulling out the inner Thanos in a storm. I wonder if this got written before or after uh, Endgame came out. I'm going to guess after. But I, I don't know how far ahead they work uh, in the comic industry. And so um, Storm says there will be no fight. Slams him with some lightning. But he doesn't go down. He's like, is that the best you can do? And she's like, oh, no, that was just the leader. The main bolt is still charging up in the cloud. And he's like, oh, and then he gets absolutely flattened. There's even a crater around him from the lightning bolt. Hell yeah, son. And so they get the kids on the boat and, you know, put them through um, the portal to uh, to send them uh, to Krakoa while they go off on another mission. Awesome, awesome stuff, right? And then we go over here to uh, Shadowcat and Bishop, uh, and Kate and Lucas have an adventure on their own. They're in Taipei. They're looking at um, some blueprints, and uh, Cr uh, Kate says she doesn't know uh, Kirk Cohen, and she says, uh, because she never walked through a gate, they haven't figured that out yet. She says uh, she'll get Emma to download it for her later. And so they're going to jump in, parachute into a building, and I mean literally into a building because it's shadow cat and that's what she does right and i love this lucas uh, or bishop says so what did you and logan infiltrate when you did this and she says you misunderstood i told logan i could do this but he said it was crazy he's like we're, we're gonna die and then uh she says if you want to be the red bishop we're going to need to work on a more positive attitude love it so basically they parachute to the top of this building and she just phases them right through into this uh, penthouse um, where uh, they're trying to get something. Uh, Kitty, no, or Kitty, not Kitty, Kate notices an ivory tusk and then just jams it in the wall. It's like, oops, it fell into the wall. <laughs> and so there's this uh, big void behind the wall that they're going to go get. Turns out um, there is someone locked in like an air-gapped cell in there. So there's like the outer cell and then an empty room and then this like cage in the middle where we meet this guy. Now we learn that this guy is um, the husband of the woman we saw back in issue one that was ranting and raving about the mutants took her husband because her husband had touched one of the mutant gates and then boom, disappeared. Turns out she's been hiding him all along inside their apartment, inside their penthouse. Um, he kneels down and basically calls the mutants gods. And um, uh, Bishop is like, um, this guy's Order of Vax, one of the mutant worshiping cults that have sprung up. And I love it. Uh, Kate gives a call out to Mojo verse here. Mojo is so weird. I haven't seen Mojo in a long time. I'd be interested to see. Um, I, uh, a, a callback, or not a callback, a, an appearance by, by Mojo. And um, I love this, uh, Katie, uh, Kate asks, there are really humans that worship us, right? Because that's not something you would ever see. And he says, yeah, Xavier spoke to the entire world. Everyone heard his voice in their heads and it drove a bunch of them out of their damn mind, which is perfectly, um, you could definitely see that coming, right? If, if that happened in real life. And so um, they keep talking and they've been in there way too long and they get um, attacked. Someone comes in to ruin their day and it's these two lady Deathstrike looking ladies. Kind of this weird, um, I think they call out Lady Deathstrike. But um, <laughs> yeah, Kitty said, or Kate says, did Lady Deathstrike start a maid service? And so they, um, they fight. I love uh, Kate gets popped in the face here again in the nose she's bleeding all over from her nose she says damn it it was almost healed i would love it if it was a running joke as long as this series lasts that basically her nose never heals like every four or five issues she just gets popped again and it keeps getting broken until she eventually just says you know what make me a new body i'm tired of this that would be pretty hilarious right and then i thought this panel was odd where she hits one of them with a pillow and i'm like a pillow that's not scary and then i remember it's Shadow Cat, and she phases the pillow into her. Anything can be deadly in Shadow Cat's hands. I mean, anything. Like, you get a, a breadcrumb in your damn brain, and you're toast, right? <laughs> breadcrumb toast, yeah. There we go. Inadvertent puns on Wildebeard Reviews. There you go. That'll be a new video series. Um, 
So Shadow Cat and Bishop uh, take her take down the the Death Strikes um, and then go to this big hate rally where the woman uh, is leading everything and they basically show hey here's your husband he's worshiping uh, mutants and you know you tried to hide it all your husband joined a cult and you thought you could blame Krakoa the days of mutants and uh, uh, being scapegoats are over and so they embarrass her everyone's yelling boo boo and then they kind of get out of there uh, we get a um, uh, string of text messages here between uh, Bishop and Beast. Uh, Bishop warning Hank about um, the the death strikes that they just fought because he's keeping tabs on that stuff. And he's like, you know, Kate wants me to join the Hellfire Club, but I'm told told her I don't want to. And uh, Be uh, Beast actually encourages him to do it because he says, I hope you consider the opportunity. It seems like it would yield a treasure trove of intel from abroad and in the homeland. So I hope Bishop does indeed join. I could see... Uh, I could see one Lucas Bishop pulling off a really slick uh, three-piece red suit. I could I could see him doing that. He would pull that off nicely, right? So then we get um, the hateful woman at the end here going to someone to um, pay them off, and it looks like um, there is a like a kids version of the Hellfire Club. I'm not at all familiar with these characters, and she's basically you know paying her way into their little club, right? I don't know who these people are. I'm going to, I'll probably look it up later. Um, but so just another great, amazing issue from what is shaping up to be an amazing series one for the ages. Uh, so guys, what did you think of Marauders issue four? Let me know all your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here at the channel. Please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. It would mean a lot. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.